Hello, my friend. May God bless you. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the guide, the guide of God's children, the guide of those whom Jesus saved, may He instruct each and every one of us in the path that we should follow, in our choices, in our thoughts, in our eyes, our hearts. May He reign in deed and in truth inside of each and every one of us so that we may know what is His good and perfect will for each of us. Yesterday, we spoke about malice, and it seems silly, it seems so simple. However, you have no idea of how important this word is, the one that the Apostle Peter, led by the Holy Spirit, passes on to us, to you, to me, to all of us. Because this, this word draws the attention or the yellow light goes off concerning th something that we can all relate to. Sometimes, and, and this is what happens a lot inside of the churches especially, what happens? People, people who don't have the Holy Spirit, they obviously have no spiritual discernment to evaluate themselves instead of looking at themselves, they look at others, unfortunately. And the devil distracts them. He's there shaking his rattle so that people will be attentive to their bad eyes towards other people. Instead of looking at themselves, they look at others. This is such a big danger. You have no idea how subtle this trap of Satan is. It's a disgrace. He makes, he instigates, he doesn't come and forces our eyes to be bad. No, he just speaks subtly. He suggests when Satan was talking to Eve, he just brought one word of doubt, one word of doubt. When Eve was attracted by the forbidden fruit, then he brought a word of doubt. But look, do you think it's God's will that you won't eat of this fruit as well? I'm paraphrasing here. Sometimes that's what happens. When we look at somebody with malice, we are looking at the fruit that Eve was in love with and led Adam to fall because she fell and she didn't want to be alone. She also wanted to take her husband with her and he fell as well. And then the kingdom of the world, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan was born. The kingdom of Satan is this world. This world that was created in sin. Jesus came into this world to save, to save those that pay attention to his word, not to the words of the devil, because those who live in the kingdom of this world, they pay attention to the voice of this world. But those who live in the kingdom of God, 
they only give ears to the voice of God. So, when I read this text here, when the Holy Spirit said, Therefore, laying aside all malice, and not only malice, but all deceit, and not only deceit, but hypocrisy, and not only that, but also envy, and not only envy, but also all evil speaking. This is too strong. This is very strong. This here, each one of these words, you could write a book to awaken the faith of those who are asleep, slumbering in the faith. Dear friend, the Holy Spirit, when He comes upon us, He gives us direction. But this does not mean that He will guide us as He is guiding a robot. Not at all. He guides us, leads us, He teaches us, He convinces us of our sins, of righteousness, of judgment, but He doesn't impose, He doesn't force anything. He is God. And He respects our will. He respects our free will. But He speaks. For sure, He is speaking to you right now. Because when you... For example, just an example, when you go to a church and you are looking at the person who is next to you or the person who is in front or behind or that came into the church with you and you are observing the details around, the clothes they are wearing, the hairstyle they, they have on, the makeup and so on, then you are seeing the way of that person. When you are observing that, then that's what the devil wants. That's exactly what the devil wants. He wants us to be distracted with the colorfulness of the, for example, the makeup of that woman, that young lady, the clothes she's wearing, or by their beauty, the beauty of the young men, and things of this nature. That's what the devil wants you to to look at. Do you know why? Because when you observe these things, then immediately he brings those suggestions and then curiosity is born and one thing leads to another. So that's what the devil wants. He wants to deviate your eyes from the Word of God. He wants to deviate your ears from the voice of God. He does not want you to pay attention to the word. He does not want you to pay attention to the lyrics of the song that you are singing or the hymn you are singing. He wants you to enter in, in that state of emotion, that feeling of the melody. And when you navigate in the emotions of that melody without being attentive to the spirit of the word in that song, then you are so caught up in that emotion that you cry, you are moved. But then you think that this is the Holy Spirit. And it's not, dear friend. It's not at all. Not at all. The Holy Spirit is the Word. It's thought. It's truth. It's light. There's nothing to do with feelings. Nothing of emotion in Him. It's all about reasoning, rationalizing. You think. You consider things. You evaluate things. When the Holy Spirit comes, he makes us, He 
instigates us to think, to rationalize. For example, this word here, when Peter says, laying aside all malice, how does malice come about? It comes when we start to observe, to note, curiously, the fruit that is hanging around, the fruit from hell, the fruit that makes a person try and taste disobedience to the Word of God. So, before you look at others, look at yourself. Just as an example, I can speak of my own experience, I can't speak of others' experiences, because I'm not here to speak to you of something that is fictional or philosophy. I want to speak of my own experience, my own experience in the faith. Since the day that I stepped into the church the first time, I started to think of what was written, to think of the Word of God, whether in the song I was singing or the Word that was being preached, the pastor was speaking, and I would go check in the Bible if it was according to what was written, what he was saying. And this you should do as well. Whoever is the pastor, the bishop, whoever is the preacher, I, I want you to always check, evaluate, consider my words, my teachings, my preachings according to what is written. If it doesn't match with what is written in the Word of God, if what I speak doesn't go with the Word of God, then don't accept it. Don't accept it, because I know that the Holy Spirit is with me. However, I'm a man, and therefore I'm subject to failures. So I cannot, I cannot allow that you will base your faith upon my word upon my preaching, but it has to be upon the Word of God. And this is intelligence. This is an intelligent faith. It's not malice, not at all. You are using your reasoning. You're right. You have to check what is written. So when the Holy Spirit said, laying aside all malice, all malice, 100% of it, all malice, Meaning, don't look at others, don't observe others, because what he is saying here relates to every one of us. God is speaking here to each and every Christian. It's not for uh, some people here and there. No, it's all of us, including myself. So, he says, Therefore, lay aside all malice. And I would like to emphasize here, is that in the beginning of my faith, I was always observing what was written, what I was listening. I would think the thoughts of God. I wanted to know, to find out. I wanted to be saved. I wasn't saved. I was still in that process of developing my salvation. Let's put it this way. And I had this principle within me to not observe others, to not be looking at so and so or whoever, I would be focused on myself because I wanted to be saved. If I want to be saved, I have to take care of my choices. And it says there, therefore, laying aside all malice, so I had to look after myself. And you have to look after yourself. Don't be looking at others because it's pointless for you to try to gain others. It's pointless for us to save others and lose our own soul. It's pointless to preach to others and not to get what we preach for ourselves. So,
so lay aside all malice, all malice, whatever is, whatever is the attention that the rattle of the devil is trying to draw you to, is trying to awaken, to drag your attention to it. Don't be attentive to this. You are going to be attentive to what God says. You go to church, you will go seek the presence of God. Go with this thought, your thoughts on the things of God. Don't worry uh, or be occupied in, in thinking of somebody else's problems. Look at yourself because in order for you to receive God's blessings, you have to give your entire life. You have to place all of your life on the altar. It's pointless for you to go on the altar with your heart full of worries, isn't it? With your heart full of doubts, full of grudges or malice. So look after yourself. Take care of yourself. Look at yourself. If you want to help somebody, pray for that person. Ask God on their behalf. It's fine, but you cannot be observing people around you or things around you. You have to look at yourself because salvation, dear friend, our salvation cost the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's very precious. It's very, very precious. It's infinitely rich. And it's not easy. It's not easy. It's not dancing that people will enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, since the days of John the Baptist, is taken by force. You have to, it's not violence or force against others. You have to violate your own self. You have to go against your own self, your desires, your lust, your sensations and feelings, your dreams, personal dreams, your personal project concerning this world. You have to invest in your goals concerning eternity, not concerning this world. So look after yourself because it's going to be worth it. Because even though people are filled with the Holy Spirit, I've seen many of them fall, unfortunately, unfortunately, disgracefully. I observe because we are in the same battle to save souls to save the souls of those who have been coming to us. We are fighting to lead them to this understanding of intelligent faith. So look after yourself. Don't allow anything to deviate your focus from yourself and from the author of faith, which is Jesus. Laying aside all malice, all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, hypocrisy, envy to be paying attention to somebody else's life. Oh, so and so has it, so I would like to have it as well. Don't do that. Look at yourself. Oh my God, what do you want from me? Let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done in my life. And whatever you give me, I will be grateful. Envy. Envy, to be envious. You know what happens. Let me tell you something. The devil stirs up envy. He brings that thought. Oh, you see, that brother there has a car like this. Their life is like that. They have a house, a car, money. And you, what do you have? 
So he wants to bring a word of doubt for you to be thinking, oh, it's true, I don't have what he has. And then you start to want what he has, but you don't know that that person perhaps is lost. They are satisfied with the wealth of this world. And the Lord Jesus said, how difficult it is for those who trust in their wealth to inherit the kingdom of God or to enter, inherit the kingdom of God because people trust in what they see or touch which is the wealth they have. But this is a subject for another day. But what I want to focus so you won't forget is for you not to be looking at others because if you look at others, certainly it will awaken malice in you, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking as well, as he says here, evil speaking, which we are going to talk about another time. Okay? Did you understand? I know that you understood. And you know why you understood? Because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit spoke right there inside of you. He convinced you. You can read this there in First Peter, first letter of Peter, chapter 2 and verse 1. I will leave it here in the caption for you to meditate later on and check that in your Bible. Read, meditate, rationalize, check, evaluate, and then come into the conclusion that that's what you have to do indeed. As newborn babies desire the pure milk, you know, as a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word, not the impure one, that you may grow thereby. Tomorrow we are going to be speaking more about this. May God bless you all. And until then, praise God.